Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today we're taking a look at the brand new Target exclusive Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Decepticon Runabout. Runabout is officially number 41 in the Earthrise toy line. Yes, we've come a long way, folks. And as I said, he is exclusive to Target stores here in the U.S. alongside the Voyager Seeker Thrust, who hasn't been released yet, but hopefully will be soon. I suspect that Runabout was meant to be part of the canceled fourth wave of the Earthrise toys, considering the fact that he comes in just normal Earthrise packaging, no mention of being a Target exclusive, he falls in line with the numbering. Uh, you know, can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure that was the plan. Thrust probably was too. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're gonna take a look at Runabout's packaging, then we'll open it up, we'll see the map piece, we'll see the instructions, and then we'll see Runabout himself in both his vehicle and robot modes. Naturally, I'll be doing plenty of group shots with his twin, Run Amuck, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Runabout, as I said, comes in standard Earthrise packaging, so nothing really new to see there. And he's kind of hard to see in the box because he's just so dark. It's some real good lighting to make up the details, but there he is. He is a slight retool of Run Amuck with the new head, which will make him more accurate to the cartoon. And he's got two weapons as opposed to Run Amok's one. And that's how you can combine them into Runabout's classic longer rifle. There's this really nice artwork of him on the side, and it's kind of that generic, like, turning and shooting pose, which, you know, may be a little old hat, but it's always pretty nice. I just love the, the grasping hand thing. Very dramatic. Then here on the back, you get the renders for the toy. See both the vehicle, robot modes. Takes 16 steps to transform. Interestingly, they don't show off his secondary weapon in these renders. So I don't know if these are just a direct lift of Runamucks. Oh, is the head sculpt different? Is it the Runamuck head sculpt? I'm not sure. Maybe? Maybe not. No, I don't think it is. But I think the poses might be the same. So yeah, they didn't include the second weapon. It's interesting. And then, of course, on the side, you get your standard Earthrise side panel. Okay, and here's our map piece for Runabout. Third decoder, and there's not a whole lot of interest here. Just a whole bunch of background noise. Little tiny planetoid there, some kind of blur here, and one travel line with some little circle going around it. That's it, pretty plain. A little uh, disappointing for an exclusive, but that's what we got. And here we have our instruction book, and you can see it's just got a nice render of Runabout on the front. Kind of squatting down, shooting up, I guess. And he's got his combined gun configuration. Got his name here. Put this out. You get his tech specs, which are nice. Shows you how to combine his two guns and have him wield it. And then you just get the transformation from robot to vehicle. That's really it. Shows you that you should put his combined weapon on the hood of the car. Sorry, the roof of the car. And that way he has somewhere to store it. And a how-to on the map as usual. And now we have Runabout in his vehicle mode. And you can see, very sleek looking. It's mostly black plastic with red pinstriping going along the side here, across the top. He's got painted red headlights. Unfortunately, the tailpipes are black like the rest of the car. And he doesn't have painted headlights, which is a real shame. He does have the white painted rims, just like Run Amuck. Now my copy is a little prone to have the windshield pop off the hood like this. And I kind of hold it on and be careful with it. I don't have that issue with my run amok toy, so your mileage may vary. Again, he's got the faux windshield on the underside, which is really silly, but at least it's nice and flat and doesn't get in the way of things. And you can see his gun mounted on top. And it's kind of hiding his Decepticon symbol. So let's pull this off. See that? It's real nice. Now the gun slash guns. This is the standard combined configuration. Then you're going to separate them to make individual weapons. This is the same mold that comes with Run Amuck, with this being the new piece. And what's interesting is you can actually, uh, they're reversible. So you can plug this gun into the back of this one if you so choose. It gives you a slightly different looking weapon. Now that's not the official configuration, and this one does, it's a tighter fit, so it does involve more potential paint rubbing because of this bit right here, this little lip. So you're better off combining them the official way, but if you don't really care about the paint rubbing, you know, you can do whatever you want. 
And again, this is, you know, made to combine to represent the original Runabout's gun, which was longer than Runamuck's. So it's a really interesting way to do that. Now here's our obligatory group shot with Runamuck. You can see they're pretty much polar opposites in the color scheme, black and white. And they have a different color layout as well. Whereas Runabout has all this pinstriping, Runamuck just, he gets this kind of gold band on the front and on the bottom of the doors here. And that's really it. Other than that, their paint schemes are very similar. They both have the white painted rims, unpainted headlights, painted taillights, unpainted exhausts. And they both have the Decepticon symbol on the roof. However, you'll notice that Runamucks is actually a fair bit bigger than Runabouts. And I imagine they did that because Runabout really needed the white border on his symbol to make it stand out from the black. And to fit the border on there without having it overlap, they got to make the symbol itself smaller. So I think that's how that came about. Uh, you can see they use very different colors for their windows and their windshield. Uh, Run Amuck uses a smoky gray where Runabout uses this really cool, just clear, dark red. Kind of like a ruby color. Yeah, they both roll fantastically compared to some other Earthrise cars. I mean, they got a lot of momentum here, so there's not much rubbing. And it's just, it's really neat getting both versions of this mold. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and transform our guys to robot mode. If you need to see that transformation, I suggest checking out the Run Amuck review where I showed it in full detail. For the sake of time and not being repetitive, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that part for this review. Okay, so here is Runabout in his robot mode, and you can see I have him dual wielding his weapons for now, just so you can see how that looks. And it's very poseable, just like his twin. And as far as tolerances, everything seems to be in order here. Everything feels about right. A little bit of sticking on this mushroom peg on this leg, but not enough to where it's really an issue. It just kind of causes a little bump there in the turn. Uh, you know, feet, ankles are all good. Shoulders are still as tight as they should be. Everything seems really nice. The only thing that bugs me a little bit, and it's not actually a problem, but just kind of annoying, is that his, te his uh, head ball joint is really tight and takes quite a fair amount of force to really turn it. In fact, I have to kind of lift it up on the panel just to get a hold of it well enough to turn it. Again, not a deal breaker by any means, but something that just mildly annoying. Didn't have to be that tight, you know? Now, to restore his more classic look, let's go ahead and recombine his weapons. Give him his longer rifle. Push that on there, make it nice and straight, and there you go. Now he's G1 accurate. He looks nice. Turn around a bit. There we go. Look at that guy. Really looks like a little bandit character because it's like he's got a ski mask on or something. Maybe even a ninja, right? So overall, he just looks really sleek, really stylish. Now, of course, we get our other group shot with Run Amok. Just so you can see how the robot modes stack up. And they're a great contrast to one another. Again, the black versus white is always a nice little trope. I don't know if you guys remember the little comic strip, Spy versus Spy, where you had like the one spy in black, one spy in white. They were trying to kill each other. Really neat. This kind of evokes that, even though these two are more partners than, you know, enemies. And, you know, when it comes to my thoughts on the mold, you know, the same thing that applied to Run Amok applies to Run About. Uh, I... I'm generally not a fan of cheating transformations, and they both do that quite a bit here. They get the faux wheels on the back of the feet, with the real wheel, real wheels, I can't talk, being tucked up inside of the trunk of their car. They also get the faux windshield chest piece, while the real thing is, again, just kind of hidden by the backpack. And, you know, again, to me, it's not ideal to do that. It kind of defeats the purpose of them having that kibble in the first place, you know? But I will say that more importantly than whether or not they cheat is how well it's pulled off in the end. And I think for the most part, these guys pull it off fairly well. Like, yes, you can see the extra hidden kibble if you're looking for it, but it's not just like really out there. It's not obstructing anything. You know, whenever I think unnecessary cheat parts, I think of the Masterpiece Bumblebee toy and it's just absurd feet has like paddles on the back, which is all the stuff that they've tucked away. These guys don't have, you know, anywhere near that problem. Now they do have big backpacks, but they're supposed to. It's a look of the characters. 
So, you know, they kind of nail it. Let's get a good look at those head sculpts while we're at it. See how much they actually differ. You can see, even though they're very similar overall, they both have kind of this ski mask look to them, their outer helmets are actually quite a different shape. In fact, really everything about them is a bit different. His nose is a little more squat. The eyes seem to be a slightly different shape. So they're just entirely new heads, which is nice. That's good. So even the back of the head is all different. That's good. It's a variety, keeps them cartoon accurate, keeps them from feeling too samey, like they're just a palette swap. And you know, if you manage to track down both of these guys, you can finally get a really nice set of battle chargers. Now don't get me wrong, the club exclusives from a while back that were the wheel jack or tracks retools, whatever you call it, those were decent. And those were the only battle chargers we got for a very long time. But these are definitely a step up. They're much more accurate. They have, you know, much more in the way of modern engineering, which is always a plus. So, I mean, they're just, they're kind of a must have if you're like a G1 completionist and you need to get, you know, the whole roster from the 80s. My thoughts on this guy, as far as which one I like between him and Run Amok more, I uh, don't really have a preference. I mean, obviously the black looks a lot sleeker. It's a bit shinier than Run Amok's more like flat white. But Run Amok, I, th I like his gold accents as well. And I do like his smoky windows. So it's just, you know, different different strokes, right? It's like choosing between two different colors of Lamborghinis. Like, I'll take either one, right? Probably the worst thing about this toy, and it's not even a fault of this toy, it's the fact that he comes with this second gun that Run Amok could have easily just included. Like, it's part of the mold. They obviously had to either gate it off or throw it away in production of Run Amok. And I really, I don't think they should do that. I don't think they should provide you with less parts for accuracy. Give them the second gun. If you want to use it, you can use it. If not, you know, keep it hidden, whatever. If you want them screen accurate. But, I mean, you're not getting the same value for these two. And admittedly, you know, it's a small difference, right? You're talking one little plastic gun, but it's more of a principle thing. You see this happen a lot where they will omit accessories just because it's not necessarily accurate for that character to have it rather than just, just let him have it. It's part of the mold. You probably already injected the plastic anyway, unless you did actually gate that little piece off. And yeah, it's just, it's a weird choice for them to make. Yeah, I would personally always err on the side of just giving that little bit more, that little bit of extra, so people don't feel like you're arbitrarily keeping things from them. But that's just me. I don't know, you might disagree on that. So, final thoughts. Again, everything that's good about the mold stands. Everything that's bad about the mold, like especially the hollow back legs, right there, just wide open. Probably my least favorite thing. You know, that still stands as well. Tolerances are all the same. Head sculpt's a little different, but mostly the same. And, you know, they're just two fairly solid toys that could have maybe used a tiny bit more work. I could forgive the, the fake parts and transformation cheating a bit more if they just found a way to cover up those, you know, backs of the shins there with some sort of panels or something just to make it look more complete. So, yeah, that's how I feel about Runabout. Feel about Runabout? So now I need to know what you all feel about Runabout. Are you excited to get this guy? Do you have a pre-order in from Target? Or do you manage to find him in the stores? Do you care enough to get him? Do you have a preference between he and Run Amok as far as which one you like the most? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Transformers Earthrise Target exclusive runabout. And with all that said, I will see you next time.